In this video, I'm going to describe how I poured a new concrete slab over this existing concrete pad to create a level floor for my room addition. You don't want to miss this one, so stick around. A large part of the success of pouring a slab over an existing slab is based on the merit of the existing slab. In my case, the existing porch floor was fairly robust, sitting on a footer foundation designed to hold up the roof. Many exterior slabs are not structural in this regard and may not be good candidates to pour a new slab over. All right, so I'm going to pour a concrete slab in order to level the elevation of this room with the existing elevation of the house. So to do that, I need to create some forms to get it to the right elevation and then brace them off like I've done here. So I've already done this side. And I'm going to show you how I did the rest of this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is figure out where my wall is going to be on the ground. So I want to mark that out. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to hang a plumb bob off this corner of the wall. And then I'll use my chalk line as a plumb bob. Get that going up in there like so. Let this hang all the way down. That, when it comes down, is going to give us the inside edge of our wall, and then I can take a measurement off of that. From here, it needs to be six inches. I'm going to use two by six for the base plate of the wall, which is only five and a half inches, but I need to allow for another half inch for the siding, the, the plywood in this case. And that's going to be right here. The wood will go to here, and then the outside of the wall will go here. So this side is a little easier. We basically have to just go six inches. Uh, because we know that the top of this lines up with the inside of our wall and we're going to use two by sixes Which is going to be pushed out here again two by six would go to five and a half, but our actual wall is going to go to six Next I needed to figure the height of the slab I did this using a homemade water level which was simply a water bottle and a length of clear hose Water would level itself on both the hose end and the jug end so I simply marked the level of water at the jug end on the wall and mark the water level on the perimeter roof post. Then I measured the distance from the water level mark on the wall to the house slab elevation. This was the elevation I wanted the new slab to match. I made a line mark on the post the same distance from the water level line providing me with the proper new slab height. Okay so this will be my outside form and I have a little bit of an elevation to deal with here. See, this is a porch, so it actually slopes a little bit this way. So I luck out and that end happens to be, to make it level, that end happens to be the height of a two by six, so that ain't fine. The problem is over here, to keep the elevation level, um, I'm about four and a half inches, so I need to trim about a half inch off on that end while leaving that end. So basically what I'm gonna do is I made a mark on that end about an inch, and then I'm gonna taper that all the way down and I'm going to make a long angle cut and the board should work. I'm going to use this as my straight edge and just mark, line it up with that line. And simply you're all in a line all the way down and of course my pen just broke so that's pretty awesome. These grease pens are great until they break. There we go. Back in business. So I'm going to basically cut along this line. I place the rip form into place and check its level. I drive stakes in the ground to provide support for the form braces. To make sure the form is not bowing in or out, I run a string over scrap blocks of the same thickness and another block to check for continuous space along the string. Then, I brace off the form using deck screws and scrap lumber. The inside form had to be scribed and ripped to the proper height of the new floor level and then braced in place. And here's a look at all perimeter forms in and secure. Now for the post, I made corner forms the same height of the perimeter forms. Finally, I sealed up the seams with silicone to ensure a clean job when the forms came off. 
I use plastic bags to compensate for large gaps from floor irregularities. Now it was time to pour. The honest best investment I made was to rent a concrete buggy. It made light work of moving a few yards of material. A small team of friends was also critical here, considering the limited amount of time of working with concrete. We used a 2x6 board as a screed to level the concrete surface with the floor and boards. A hand tamper was used to settle the aggregates in the mix, and then we ran a bull float over the surface several times to smooth it out. A bit later, as the concrete began to stiffen, we used a steel Fresno to begin to finish the floor surface, and at this time we also used corner edgers. Finally, we used steel hand trowels to do the last bit of polishing. To allow for proper curing, I wanted to keep the concrete wet. The next day, I removed the forms, but did so as gently as possible with some light tapping and prying. Now, to remove the embedded form for the door recess, I attached scrap lumber pieces to provide leverage. I used a concrete rub brick to soften the edges of the corners. Here is the completed slab, and I was excited to have gotten through this phase of the project. I kept the slab wet several days using wet blankets to help with the curing process. So with that, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing. I'm Joe Kistel.